asked directly, immediately, without any break, uh, to the last uh, lecture, um, the single female speaker of our panel, of the whole panel. So um, it's um, Dr. Valentina Gaudiano. Um, she is an adjunct professor of the Department of Theology, Philosophy, and Human Sciences at uh, the Sofia University in Lucchiano, the center of the Focola movement in Italy. He, her research focuses on German phenomenology, theory of emotions, philosophical anthropology, and Trinitarian, of course, ontology. Now, it's up to you. We are welcome you. We hope that um, you can see us. You. Yes. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay, yes, fine. Yes. You can you. Nice to see you. Yes. Yeah. So. So thank you very much uh, for the invitation. First, um, it's an honor for me to be by this panel, uh, and I hope to contribute with this last with this last talk. So for some time now, in philosophy as well as in theology, we have been searching for new and alternative theoretical paths, which would allow us to grasp in a deeper sense that phenomenon which is constitutive and in itself profoundly connected to thought, which is love, uh, life. A long history of thought, especially Greek Latin, has developed and consolidated a system based on the conception of being that, to allow the knowledge and the formulation of non transient truths, fixed reality in certain categories. Thought, as this found, a formulation into nouns, which by grasping a given reality, fix it in its univocal meaning. Here, ontology, as a clarifying and determining system of all that is considered as antithesis to what is not, is a stable and irremovable system. A system that obviously can, cannot do justice for life and to the totality of what characterizes it, made of continuous movement and transformation. So, clarifying the search of the human intellect with life philosophy on the slopes of unifying stability to the detriment of the multiple in notion. But, as we said, the system, which has wiped the centuries of human history with all its events of evolution and transformation, has been in crisis for some time now precisely because it is unable to account for changing and becoming. Paradoxically, the Christian religious message in its turn has not been able so far to express in human words what the revelatory event of Trinitarian God, therefore not monolithic and static, has brought with it into the world and therefore into the history of humanity. Christianity too has made use of static categories borrowed from the Greek philosophy of the time in order to better offer and make accessible and comprehensible this message. A God in three persons, a God who does not remain in a distant hyperuranium or paradise, but who descends into the streets of a transient and finite world, the coming man, all this cannot be totally explained only by means of the fixing and grasping categories, to use an Himmelian term, of an ontological thought, that encloses the multiple and transient in the impeccable and immutable one. So starting from the, and considering the heart of the Christian message, the Trinity, a paradoxical and fascinating fact that attempts a relationship between one and multiple, between being and movement, uh, philosophy and theology, we will look now at the relatively recent proposal of a German thinker of the last century, we uh, we spoke about him on, in this in this day, Klaus Hammerlamp, who attempted the radical turn of thought by taking this radicalism of the specifically Christian really serious, doing so in the double in the double function of theologian and philosopher. Surely, most of you are familiar with the short text 
in which Hamlet proposes his Trinitarian ontology, the thesis for Trinitarian ontology, a small booklet written in 1975 for Hansel's from Balthasar's 70th birthday. Hamlet had no pretensions of writing complete work on a new or another ontology, namely a Trinitarian one. He only wanted to make a gift to Balthasar by questioning his thinking uh, inspire a new ontology, perhaps a Trinitarian one. This attempt does not emerge from now here, but is the result of a previous type of reflection. Specifically, we can identify two works that preceded and offer a basis for it, the sacred and the thought, and prelude to theology. In fact, the first has the ground of the interrelation between thought as the main activity of the human beings and means of philosophy, and the sacred as the representation of God and theology. In the second, the prelude to theology, Hamlet uses a category, that of play or game, to present more explicitly what can become of the relation between philosophy and theology, thought and faith, mainly in ontology. The thesis stages for thoughts, rather, as Hamlet's attempt to put philosophy and theology together without mediation and without a veil, because they put ontology in connection with revelation through the concept of the Trinity and the experience of it in connection with the classical reflection of philosophy. The starting point of the discussion is the observation that ontology has evidently been removed from the center of the scientific interest and attention. And on the other side, the question, I quote Hamelin, how does the foundational human experience and understanding of God, the world, and humankind change from within when faith in Jesus Christ breaks in upon them? End of quote. The old covenant is a starting point where the human being is no longer alone because God is on his earth side. Here two things happen. God is no longer far from the human being, although he remains the only and transcendent one. He is no longer in competition with human reason, and yet he is allowed to say more and to say, I quote, what is new over and be and beyond what we are able to perceive by pondering over and wondering at the world, end of quote. The Christ event radicalizes religion and brings newness to the old covenant. God not only remains the origin and future of human life, but breaks into a with us and beside us. The destiny of Jesus is God's solidarity with us and is nearness to us. There is in the midst of our own experience and precisely in the place of our own powerlessness. Our thinking and our basic situation makes an inversion if God is the three in one, and as such, one's belief is history in ours. If one wants to reflect on the mystery to the last, to consider its implications for our thinking and life, then a Trinitarian ontology can be an answer because it puts movement and multiplicity in the center. It must be said, however, that Hamelian approach starts from an explicit refusal of the classical system of ontology and from the assumption of a more clearly phenomenological one, especially in dialogue with the Rambachian proposal of a structural ontology. The Trinity represents, that is, a theological expression of what philosophically already faces human thought dissatisfied with historical answers to a reality that I like exceeds them. As Kinsley points out, the theses are structured in a, tri in a tri triadic rhythm that shows and reflects the structural movement of the Rambachian ontology into structure, dynamics, and genesis. In this process, there is a movement. The thought must not grasp and fix phenomenal concepts, imposing them on reality, but move to the rhythm of the same rhythm that is expressed in the world, trying to listen to what it has to communicate and be. So, what then is the radical novelty of the Trinitarian message that must be understood anew in order to find a fuller sense of reality? Timberland, rereading the adventure, identifies it in happening. In the fact that Trinity bears within itself three characterizations that cannot be grasped in the fixity of categories, 
but only in the relational movement among the three persons. The Trinity is in itself the origin and principle of itself and of everything. But it is so in the movement away from itself that generates something else without diminishing God, but rather expressing its maximum fullness. This means movement in God, and the root of this is the most radical and at the same time apparently banal element of Christianity, namely love. Love is agape is the starting point of Trinitarian ontology. God does not remain in himself and in his fullness, but he unbalances himself, he moves outside himself into his other, his own, in a movement that leads towards the center where relationship is. In doing so, he gives himself through him to creation. God lets himself be touched by the other by giving himself, and in doing so, is being with him and being from self, blossoms into being poor. Such movement or relationship should not, however, be fixed in new ontological categories because this would change nothing to the old ontology. Instead, we must follow the movement, participate in the movement of love, or rather love, because in it, donation and sameness need to merge into one. When we look at love, we discover the movement of giving, of giving oneself. This is the rhythm of feeling that must be declined into the new ontology. It is a matter, I quote Hamala, of the suffering in a new and abbreviated manner, the terminology of everything vexes by means of the terminology of love, of the gift of self. The approach to love as giving of oneself means in the event, in the process, relationship happening, which would be impossible without the being for each other, being in each other and being distant from each other of the poles between which such a relation runs on the board. It is in, the, in, in this positive tension between poles something happens, and it is only in the play of teeth that it is what would not be without them. If one were to renounce a pole, one would renounce that which only comes about through the tension, precisely the process of the two sides. And the poles, I quote again, do not have an isolated place outside the happening, but are themselves in the happening. Indeed, more, they are themselves the happening. They are the following, to give oneself, to relate oneself, to throw oneself into the process and to receive from the process. To let the process happen and to let oneself happen in the process on the court. How the poles relate to each other changes the process and the process distinguishes the poles from each other. The process originates from apposite processes and is therefore multi original by nature. With all this, move <coughs> with all this movement, gains and processes, <coughs> one could get this in. It looks as, as if nothing solid, certain would remain, like the resistance of things or the seriousness of identity, which is founded in selfhood. For the verb is the avowed objection according to which the consistency of everything that exists would dissolve into the playful and non-committal. Non but this will not be the case if one keeps in mind the approach of love, the approach of giving oneself. The logic of giving is here the key. I quote Hamale, giving does not hold entirely to what it has, but gives up to what it gives. This means what giving has, that is its adequate content, it is its consummation, giving. It cannot therefore realize itself in holding, but only in giving. When it is something, I must first have it, contain it in order to then be able to give it not holding it. The hold is precisely the transgression and the state is in progress. Giving that gives itself formally presupposes the other as its adversary, as the adversary of its giving itself. The other of giving is that which is different from it, holding on continually self-giving. The paradoxical situation described by Hammerle shows the actual situation of being in general. 
It is not because of itself, but from elsewhere, because of something else. And precisely in the movement of turning itself in the direction of its own origin, which it calls and to which it gives itself, and in relation to it that arises as what it is, now and not before, but solely within the relation. This means that all the elements that for us traditionally belong to being or to ontology in general, continuum, boundary, contour, take on a new meaning. They are, I call Hamlet products, products, it even heighten, in which the origin, which has the sad concept in giving, finds itself, but it does so in such a way as to reach beyond itself, in a relationship that gives itself beyond itself, a relation rated on itself. Substance exists for a transubstantiation, for a communion, end of quote. Kamala uses some examples to explain this. In connection with tradition, he falls back on the concept of analogia entis, through images such as language or thinking. Namely, what happens in speaking and thinking can become ex exemplary for being. When something gives itself to the thought, it comes into its light, and so to itself. But it comes at the same time to what is other, in other words, to the act of being thought. In the same way, talking is an expression of giving, since it is about sharing something, and sharing means giving, donating. If we consider this to be an understood as process and donation, then analogia entis means, according to Hamela, the being in the other and the being outside the other of the him, whose meaning the being for one another discloses. The mystery of God who is giving himself is, however, also a mystery of the human being and views of human thought. Human thought is not reflect in its own structures, but will reflect in them about what permits it, permits to think. In this way, however, structures are also transformed. Thus, thought and being are in the game. They play together, and their game finds its reason and its unity in God, the mystery that shines in the game of analogy. Giving, in fact, is something that comes out of the dynamic reason of the accusative or of the subject-object relationship to open up to the triadicity of a movement between the two that goes to as a third goal and recipient, which in turn will be an active expression of loving, donating in its response to the gift by welcoming it and in it by welcoming the donor. Purely in distinction of the goals in one and the same movement that by distinguishing unites and by uniting distinguishes. So we have right here at the core of the thesis the Trinitarian God, as the mystery of love, is the new and most profound element of this new ontology. From the Trinitarian mystery of God, which is love, every being, every thinking, every happening is unlocked in its structure. Thinking is transformed in that it becomes a moving in step with the way of self giving and discovery that is precisely its originality. Everything that is, is by virtue of the movement of coming out of oneself and one's fixity to give oneself to something other than oneself. Thus, it increases the more it gives itself and receives from something else. All this can be experienced through God's giving of, in, of himself in the Son, giving that transforms everything, but it is only revealed, I quote Hamela, to those who keep themselves up to the divine self-giving and who include in the answering movement of their self-giving not only their thought, but also their existence, not only in private, but also in the whole range of their relationships. End of quote. When the one God gives himself and in his giving, he opens himself to the world, to all of us, then the analogia entis becomes an analogia trinitatis, and we are conceived in the innermost God. Father and Son and Holy Spirit we act in this one self giving, each one in its own proper manner, and in this self giving, each one is perceived as acting in a manner appropriate to him. The rest of to this, on the part of man, of the human being, refers to the one God, but the unity of the rest is constituted precisely in the repetition 
of the moments that constitute the unity of the Trinity. That is, in the pericoratic movement of love between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This movement is not circular and self-contained, but open, because in the Son, the whole world is called to the same movement of love and self-giving. For if love is, the, is at the center, then the seemingly exclusive poles belong to each other, but only in the relationship of the consummation and not in the substance relation. And if practices on love, on giving oneself a those on relationship and fulfillment, life and thought necessarily belong together, theory and practice and a spirituality that emerge in the fulfillment of both. The individual and the whole overcome their competition and in their mutual relationship become the space in which divine life is witnessed, even experienced in a worldly, traditional way. The Italian ontology for Hamada is called when intertwining of philosophy and theology, which means rethinking of both. Philosophically, it is possible through the integration of guilt, grief, and loneliness as ordinary experiences of our life, that means of our thought. And they are integrated to the kinesis of God and Jesus Christ. All finitenesses and contradictions are taken up and in through the event of Jesus giving himself that thereby part of the womb. Without application, because God remains God and the borderline experiences of the world are not spared from it either. In all happening, I quote, and I'm coming to the conclusion, in the happening of love and in the happening of the resistance of love, the cross is the critical point that requires the most courageous link, because in it the fullness of the self is associated with sharing with the other. Through the daring leap, however communal is possible, in the cross the human matter, the life and death of the human being becomes God's matter. His life and death. In the following of the cross, the dimensions of divine love, in its wisdom and blessedness, become something for the human being, a possibility for the human being, a gift for the human being. But in it, this takes place the integration that gathers the whole. In the cross of Christ are the whole. God and the whole human, they are height and death. In the cross lies everything, and of course. So, as an ontology of love and self giving, the Trinitarian ontology proposed by Hamlet becomes an ontology of concrete living, of a highly incarnate and profoundly transcendent thought that finds its center precisely in the cross, in the knot of being itself. Many years after the writing of pieces, Hamlet strenuous with us by going so far as to maintain that a new Trinitarian ontology is achieved when, in the encounter with the abandoned God, I discover a truly strange logic, an original circle, which can perhaps be described as follows. God is love. Love is giving oneself. Giving oneself means losing and becoming nothing. Becoming nothing is, however, an expression of love that is God. Those is nothingness and in losing God is fullness. And this fullness is in turn giving oneself and losing oneself in nothingness. The cross of the forsaken Christ is only the place but God, the Trinity, is manifested and revealed since the, since the Father's love is given to us in the Son. The Son's love is shown to us in his radical yes to the Father. There we find the place where the Spirit is simultaneously returned to the Father and removed from him to, given, to be given to us. Ultimately, the event of the cross marks the proposal of the only logic of the womb. Not of a negative one, nor of defeat or interruption, but a logic of love that descends to the extreme opposite of self, to the utmost distance from self, to the experience of God's distance or absence, changing it into its closeness and presence precisely because of love. So thank you for your attention. Well, thank you so much, um, Dr. Gaudiano, Valentina Gaudiano, for your paper. Uh, I have to apologize that I had great, I had great problems uh, understanding your uh, lecture just for acoustical reasons. This is for transmission, technical transmission of your um, speech. I'm sorry. 
Um, so I couldn't get everything what you have told us. But I hope that the others uh, had better, had better experience, could understand you more properly. So now we have five minutes left, or only five minutes because of reasons of time. I'm sorry, uh, five minutes left for the questions. Are there any questions concerning the lecture of Dr. Pogliano? Um, okay, uh, I would uh, suggest that um, what Klaus Hemmele did, what he undertook in his thesis on Trinitarian ontology, belongs to what um, Mr. Royek um, has uh, told us or has uh, shown us to um, the type of a theological philosophy uh, presupposing the, the belief in the, in the Trinity, the Christian belief in the Trinity, and uh, yes, trying to draw some consequences concerning ontology, concerning anthropology, concerning social and political life, and so on, um, from that presupposition. Um, but um, are there any other questions? Um, so we have there are three, four minutes left. Um, I'm just looking at the audience. So, uh, yeah, the exhaustion is, is, is great after uh, yeah, I a long think, I think. Oh, Yes, Ryan Hacker. Has, <laughs> Ryan Hacker, there's one question. Hello, thank you very much for a brilliant paper, Valentina. Uh, my name is uh, one question that people often ask us is, what is new in the Trinity or in Trinitarian ontology? And it's quite a novel and exciting and perhaps even controversial thing to say that you have some new interpretation of the Trinity as often has been decided and reversed for centuries and millennia. Um, one thing you said that particularly struck my interest was you said that um, the novelty of Trinitarian ontology or the Trinity arises from... Excuse me, Ryan. I cannot understand you because I, I hear an echo. Yeah, I think you have to uh, switch have off the microphone because it's falling. Yeah? Um, I want to ask what is new in Trinitarian ontologies and what makes uh, our investigation of the Trinity new and novel? And one thing that you said that struck my interest was you said that the novelty of the Trinity arises precisely from the, the excess of relationality the relation that is in excess of any dyadic relation of one to another, but is rather related one to another, one over another to a third, and in that excess of a third, always related in beyond itself to something new. Um, you also suggested that uh, love is the starting point of any reflection on the Trinity. And in a sense, um, we are always receiving and responding to that. And in the response that we give to love, we're also interpreting and responding to this, this call and this exchange and this affectation of love in any way. And I wonder if, um, if this has been particularly important for your work at uh, the Sophia Institute in, in Florence, and whether um, you see that love as something that can inspire us in the future for our work in investigating the Trinity. Uh, you will have to turn on your mic. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I, I will try to answer to, to these many questions in, in this briefly time. Um, so uh, you said what um, what's new in in this um, in this way or in this approach of Klaus Hammerlein? I must say what I present to you is surely as uh, as the as the work of every one of us. Not only the thinking of Klaus Hammerlein, but also uh, my thinking, my um, my also in understanding. Klaus Hemmerle, um, and I think the newness was not complete expressed by Klaus Hemmerle itself, because I think he had not time. Uh, he died very, um, very young uh, for thinking. So, but um, in his thinking, not only in the Trinitarian ontologies, very, very often we we read the, the, the thesis, but I think the approach to a Trinitarian ontology and perhaps to something else, what, what is not much more an ontology, perhaps, um, I'm thinking about this, so I don't have uh, uh, an answer on this question, but also ontology is perhaps a problem. When we think 
the revelation when we when we look at the message of the revelation this is the starting point of klaus hammerland and also of our approach here at the university um i think we do not have thought enough what is in the revelation of god uh, namely in love as i said at the end love as to lose to completely lose oneself in the other and to be oneself when and only when the other keep give yourself to you again because you can you can you can stay as a loose person so that's a risiko of of Christ of the cross uh, in that moment so i think that um the key that's the point where well uh, where we can where we can think much more about the, a really finite ontology i mean uh, an ontology or a thought a human thinking a human approach to reality the whole not only to the relation of god god is one matter god is one object for a philosopher about all all the things all, all what we are we can think what appear to our perception and so on we can think all that if we try to think um far away to really far away to the old categories and and this is what uh, what i what i what i said at, at the beginning as well and also hamela isn't it thinking a little bit in the old categories it try to put something new through the rambachian structuralism or structural ontology where you have not only the being and the substance but also and at the center the relationship among the three the relationship among the poles as is said so i think it's uh, it's a newness but um perhaps um if i say put on food what you said at the, at the end in uh, in relation to our to our work and study here at the field university perhaps we um we didn't we didn't put the step enough we are working uh, on this on this path um because i think it's really really difficult to to translate into philosophical categories where philosophy remains philosophy a profound dialogue with theology which remains theology starting from law so i don't know if if i uh, if i answer to you okay yeah. okay um miss galiana there's a message from mr danyaha in the chat he says thank you very much for your paper i have often wondered about the relationship between hamley's view of love and his view of the church's life and thoughts so the um, you mean uh what hamley thinks about the relationship of, uh, about love um and and church life um he wrote and he spoke much more than wrote about uh church life sure he was a bishop not only a theologian and a philosopher and um but if you look at uh, this reading or um writing you cannot find so many um explanations about church life starting from love from the word love but you find much more um, a sort of translation of love directly in the word communion it's um it's a, a really really common word in um in hammerless approach not only to philosophy and theology but also to ex ecclesiology if you want to say to church life so we are invited when we think what i said before when we really try not only to think but to put us into this movement of the trinity as this movement of giving one self and receiving one self from the other as so of love so the consequences are a life of communion we leave communion 
under under the under under the human beings, such as or in a form as in the Trinity, uh, in the human in the human reality. So I I will say that the the way or the consequences for church life are to put communion in the midst. If you want not structure, not um, what you have to do in what um, in what order, but uh, first of all, communion. Yeah. Thank you so much for this emphasis on the communion of character of love as a complementary our panel. Thank you so much. Um, Valentina Gaudiano, and now I would like only, um, yes, to have some concluding remarks, uh, very short in two or three sentences. I've dropped my original plan <laughs> to give a more systematic summary. My dear audience, please allow me, instead of a summary of the most important contents of the extremely inspiring and instructive lectures given on this panel, which is hardly possible anyway, to uh, thank all participants. Okay, yes, thank you. <laughs> to thank all participants of our panel on behalf of our organization committee very heartfully, who have contributed to the success of our panel by their very constructive presentations and their keen contributions and answers to the discussion. And we would like to thank the main organizers, the matadors of our organization committee, Mr. Ryan Hecker and Mr. Eduard Fiedler, for their great commitment, which made this panel possible in the first place. Thank you so much. We are deeply indebted. Um, it is planned to publish the lectures of our panel. You will be contacted promptly um, in this regard. So retain your papers for that purpose, please. Um, the only thing left for me to do now is to wish all of us a good recovery, good recreation from the exertion of uh, our today's panel and good conversations in the evening and to wish those who are physically present at our panel a safe and happy return home or wherever you travel on tomorrow. Many thanks and goodbye.